always wanted to create a kaleidoscope effect in Adobe Photoshop but never knew exactly where to start? Well, if that's the case, then you're in luck since in this video I'm going to walk you through the entire process and show you how to do so using the scripted fill and transform again functions. I'm Andrew and you're watching an Envato Task Plus tutorial. Assuming you already have the software up and running, we're going to start by selecting an image that's centered around a human subject, which we'll extract from the background and then use to create our pattern. In my case, I'm going to use this stock image from Photo Dune, which I already went ahead and downloaded. Once we have our image, we're going to want to open it up in Photoshop and then make a selection of the subject itself using the Quick Selection tool so that we can separate it from the background. In case we've added some unwanted sections of the background to our selection, we can easily remove them by holding down the ALT key and then simply painting over them. Take your time, and once you finish making your selection, we're going to use the Select and Mask function, which will bring up the Properties panel, where we're going to set the radius to 2 pixels, making sure to check the Smart Radius option. Depending on the image that you're using, you might want to play around with some of the different available settings in order to make the selection as clean as possible. Once you're done, hit OK, and then turn the selection into a layer mask by going to Layer, Layer Mask, Reveal Selection. Click on the layer thumbnail to make sure that the focus is on the layer and not the mask itself. And then go to Edit, Define Pattern, giving it a custom name since we're going to use it later on to create the pattern. Since we no longer need the image, we can close it and then create a new 2500 by 2500 pixels document, making sure to set the background contents to black. Next, we're going to create a new layer using the Ctrl Shift N keyboard shortcut, naming it Scripted Fill. Once we have our second layer, head over to Edit, Fill, where we'll want to set the contents to Pattern, and then set a custom pattern to the image of the girl that we've just finished isolating. Move on down and enable the script checkbox, making sure to set it to Symmetry Fill. As soon as we hit OK, a new symmetry fill window will appear where we'll want to set the symmetry type to 32 wallpaper P6 symmetry, the pattern scale to 0 0.75, the pattern translation along width to 25%, and the pattern translation along height to minus 40%. Since we want to adjust the visibility of the pattern, we're going to add a hue saturation adjustment layer setting the saturation to minus 57% and the lightness to minus 62%. Next, we're going to grab the Ellipse tool and after setting the tool mode to Path, we're going to create an 800 by 800 pixel circle which will then center align to the underlying canvas. Add a new layer named Girl Circle and then head over to Edit, Fill again and change the scripted field to place along path. Set the pattern scale to 0 0.45, the spacing to minus 720 pixels, making sure to check the adjust spacing to fit option. Increase the distance from path to 360 pixels, leaving all the other settings unchecked and then hit OK. At this point, we can start working on the Blossom effect by first removing the circular path and then selecting the repeating pattern and using the alt Control t keyboard shortcut in combination with the left click in order to duplicate the layer. Adjust the resulting copy by setting the scale of both its width and height to 80% 
and the rotation to 20 degrees. Use the Alt Control Shift T keyboard shortcut to duplicate the action, which will create a secondary copy that will be subjected to all the previous transformations. Create three copies of the Girl Circle layer using the Transform Again keyboard shortcut that we've just learned. Add the new layer called Gradient, and after setting the foreground color to black, grab the Gradient tool and using the foreground to transparent preset and radial gradient type, draw out the gradient starting at the center of the canvas in order to darken it. Since we're pretty much done working with the repeating image, grab the polygon tool and create a 480 by 480 pixel shape, setting the size to 5 the fill to none, the stroke color to white, and the stroke width to 4 pixels, making sure to center align the resulting shape to the canvas afterwards. Next, we're going to rasterize the shape by heading over to Layer, Rasterize Shape, and then turn it into a pattern by first hiding all the other layers by holding down the Alt key and then clicking on the visibility toggle icon and then heading over to Edit, Define Pattern, and giving it a custom name. Toggle back the visibility for all the other layers, and then create a new layer called Background Lines, making sure to remove the polygon afterwards. Head over to Edit, Fill, and set the custom pattern to the one that we've just created, setting the script to Symmetry Fill. Set the symmetry type to 33 wallpaper P6M symmetry, the pattern scale to 0.4, and then both the pattern translation along width and height to 50%, and then hit OK. Adjust the resulting background by lowering the opacity of its layer to 25%. Grab the polygon tool again and create an 800 by 800 pixels triangle with a 4 pixels fixed stroke, making sure to position it to the center of the canvas. Use the Alt Control T plus left click to create a copy, which will adjust by setting the rotation to 20 degrees. Create a spiral graph by using the Alt Control Shift T keyboard shortcut about 18 times in order to add the adjusted copies. Select all the triangles from within the layers panel and then group them into a single folder using the Ctrl G keyboard shortcut, giving it a custom name afterwards. Go to Layer, Layer Mask, Hide All to add the layer mask to the group, and after setting the foreground color to white, grab the gradient tool, and using a transparent foreground with a radial gradient, draw out the gradient from the center of the canvas, in order to fade the triangle artwork into the human spiral. Finally, use the Crop tool to crop the image just below the center of the canvas in order to complete the effect. That being said, I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you in the next one.